Oh, you no, did. Right. Okay, there you are. Okay. It's working? Yeah. Yep. Okay, great. It's working. We'll see you. Vincent, I can I can go tell Chris if you want the the, the live feed to start now. No, Josh just went over to tell him. Oh, gotcha. Okay, we're good. You look so bored. participating in this meeting. Wow. Well, we get more on the virtual meeting than the normal meeting. <laughs> and then we're getting, you know, we'll have more applicants probably calling in in, in a bit. Excellent. How many are wearing pants? <laughs> don't we don't need to know up. that. <laughs> Stay seated at your desk. <laughs> still have uh, okay so I was looking at some of the chats that were coming in and one of them was from you John but that's when you said you weren't getting any sound so are we live? Yeah, I got it fixed. so we are apparently live all right well I will call to order the Sierra Madre Planning Commission meeting of Thursday April 2nd do we have a roll call yes chair Hutt vice here. Denison here commissioners Catalano here Dallas? Here. Desai? Here. Hetzner? Here. Here. Okay. We have a quorum. Uh, do we have a motion to approve the agenda? So moved. I'll second. Okay. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Does anybody oppose? Can't, hard to tell who said aye. Okay, so there's no opposition. Next, we'll move on to approval of the minutes of the meeting of March 5th. Are there any comments or questions? I'll abstain. I wasn't there. I move we accept them as presented. I'll second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, I think we've got unanimity with one abstention there. That's me, Joe. I think yeah. I wasn't there also. So, I don't remember. Okay. Then you can be completely objective. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
Now, moving on to the public hearings. First, we have disclosure of site visits. Um, we're going to continue number one, so we can skip that. Um, meeting or hearing number two, I visited that uh, previous. And number three, I didn't do an exhaustive visit, but I drove by. I'm sorry, number three was which? Number three is the uh, 686 Mariposa. Uh, I, yeah, as Joe, I'd like to disclose that I did visit the site and, and walk around, including the backyard yesterday. Um, uh, I had I had no conversation with the owner other than a, a, a hello and a thank you. I went to... I went to the sites on Santa Anita and on Mariposa and spoke with the owner in Mariposa. I, I didn't went to the site on Santa Anita previously and I went to the site on Mariposa today and spoke to the owner, but not about the project. I did not visit either site. I did not visit either site either. John, I just want to mention that the first time the Santa Anita project came around, I, I visited the site then, so I did not return this time. Okay, great. Okay, let's move on to the first public hearing, which is Hillside Development Permit 1402 and CUP 1408. Um, we are going to continue this at the request of the applicant. Do we need a motion on that, or can we just table it? Actually, if I could uh, mention that the applicant uh, is asking for an additional extension to May 7th in lieu of the April 16th date. I just received an email uh, on that on, on Monday requesting to okay. May 7th. Hey, can we ask the applicant to um, put something on the sign that's on the street that says that it's to May 7th then so people know? Because yeah. one of the problems is the signs are up there and then people come or, or they look and then it get, keeps getting continued and then they... Uh, get deterred from participating. And they curse the bureaucracy. Make sure that occurs. <laughs> I move that we continue to a date certain of May 7th. I'll second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any Aye. opposed? Okay, motion carries unanimously. Now we'll move on to design review permit 1906 at 1910 Santa Anita Avenue. Do we have a staff report? We have a staff report that's going to be delivered by associate planner Claire Lynn, and she is also providing the PowerPoint presentation. So she's going to be queuing that up in a moment. Okay. And that's going to show on our screen, right? Yay. There it is. All right. Look at that. Now, on the screen, do you see all of uh, everyone pictured, or do, do you just see the entire? PowerPoint. Uh, I see all. I, I see all the people uh, off to the uh, right. Uh, right hand uh, side vertically. Do a high thumbnail. Okay, we'll just do active speaker. Okay, Claire, you can go ahead and begin. Okay. Good evening, chair and commissioners. So Planning Commission this evening will be reviewing the design review permit um, for the property located at 1910 Santa Anita Avenue that is continued from the February, February 20th meeting. I need to figure out a way to go to the next slide. So the proposed project um, is a new 3,462 square foot, two story single family residence with an attached two car garage. From the previous meeting, proposed project design, massing and siting were well received by the commission and it will remain unchanged. It is a co-compliant project that meets all the requirements. The presentation will be focused on addressing the commission's concerns. So the applicant has returned with following items, a revised grading plan to address additional site details, provided 
cross section and longitudinal section. And then a elevation that will include grading profile site condition at property line. And they, they have also proposed a wood arbor to soften the appearance of the garage. Updated color and material board to propose a darker tone and a large faced stone veneer. They also study the option to reduce the front yard setback. Okay. So this is the revised grading plan that addressed the unsolved issues with the site. The civil engineer provided the great elevation new sections that cut through the site, showing the site profile, including the existing and finished grade. And it also indicated the location of the new and the existing retaining walls, black um, and also the block walls at the northeast and south side of the property boundary. So as a result from the revised grading plan, the garage finish floor here um, needs to be modified to be raised by 12 inches to accommodate the transition from the street grade to the garage. The revision also affected the floor plans that um, where it entered from the garage to the house, um, they will need to reorient it to accommodate that difference. And there is a two steps down from the garage finish floor into the main house. Claire, do you have a pointer? Um, pointer, yes. Claire, excuse me, did you say that they're stepping down two steps from the garage into the main house? Yes. So that's a code violation. Where's this guy coming from? So this is the revised plan that they come in from the garage into the landing and they step two step down into the house. Well, the, the landing right at the at the door at the threshold has to be a certain amount uh, uh, higher. Uh, okay, maybe the, maybe the landing itself is higher, okay, but it has to be higher than the garage floor by, uh, unless the code has changed, I think it's four inches something. Okay, we'll make a note of that. Uh, okay, you, in other words, that garage floor always has to be uh, so many inches lower than the threshold that you, you step through. But this can be worked out in, in working drawings. It shouldn't hold us up. Okay. Um, the next slide is the new section, cross sections that the applicant has provided uh, and integrate what they receive from the civil engineer showing the site condition and the longitudinal section aligns the neighboring property immediately to the north and the south. Mm -hmm. Here are the revised elevations the, that shows the profile of the site. This is the south elevation and the north elevation. And you can see that they have included the retaining wall. The retaining walls and the, it shows the grade difference. On the elevation, the south elevation, 
the applicant can also add a stone veneer to wrap around from the west. And this is the revised elevations of the west elevation, which is the street elevation and the east elevation. Can I interrupt for a second? Mm -hmm. um, am I missing something? These drawings look different than the drawings that were in the packet. They should be the same. I am looking at the packet now. They, they are the same. What? They are the same as the packet. They are? Yes. Oh. We're looking at A3 right now. What we did in the PowerPoint presentation okay. was just extract from the overall um, sheet and then just introduce the individual building elevations so they fit in the presentation format. Okay, so you rearranged it all and stuff. Okay. So the stone veneer is added to the west elevation and also the library wall on the front elevation has been revised with the full siding. Applicant also proposed a wood arbor to be added onto the top of the garage to allow plants to grow and soften the garage door appearance. However, with the new information from the civil plans, the garage will not be appear to be a prominent feature as one third of the garage door is not visible from the street. Um, this is the street profile, the dash line is the street profile. And here are the perspective renderings that illustrates the site elevation um, and it also shows the retaining wall at retaining wall and fences at the property line. These are the color and materials that will be used for the project. The items that was updated is the color for the wood siding. It was reversed, uh, revised to be off-white color in a white swan. And then the stack, the stone is replaced with the large face stone veneer. The applicant also did a study on the options to reduce the front yard setback. The study here illustrates um, if the front yard setback is reduced by five feet, moving the entire building footprint westward, it would make the transition between the street curb and the garage door even steeper. And if the applicant only moved the footprint of the living room portion forward by five feet, it would be difficult to tie the roof above the living room and the roof above the garage to be in the same plank. So it is applicants um, wish to keep the existing 35 foot front yard setback. Here is the photo montage of the project and design review permits findings has to be made in order to approve the project. And here are the summaries of the findings. The property will continue to be used as a single family residence, and it is consistent with the low density general plan designation and zoning code. The project complies with the setback, height, lot coverage, and floor area requirements, and it is compatible with bulk scale massing, mass and siding. The proposed home will not interfere with the public view or the views and privacy of the neighbors and preserve all existing trees on site. The proposed 
project um, in the wrench architectural style is not ill proportioned or detracts from the foothill village setting. And the project is a thoughtful wrench architectural style that is responsive to the site by preserving all trees on site and placing the two story element on the north portion of the lot and the single story element around the front and the south elevation. The siding is in keeping with the landform and maximize the open space on the south and the east side. Project will be constructed with high quality materials and it will also comply with the solar requirement, the drought tolerant plant palette, water efficiency landscape and low impact development ordinance. The alternative before planning commission this evening is to approve the project, approve the project with modification, or deny the project, citing the reason and findings for denial, or continue the project and provide directions to staff and applicant. Staff is recommending that the planning commission approve the design review. Permit 1906 pursuant to the Planning Commission Resolution 2001 with the attached conditions of approval. That concludes my presentation and um, I'll be answering any questions you might have. The applicant is also online. Um, he will be able to address any questions you would have. Okay, hey, do we have any Questions of staff? No. Is the applicant civil engineer online? Um, no. Oh, I'm only the designer. The civil engineer is not present tonight. Okay. Um, would the applicant like to make a presentation or, or do you just here to answer questions or what? Uh, yeah, I'm available to ask. Can everybody hear me? Yeah. yeah. Yep. Okay, great. Um, so one of the major um, concern from last meeting was about the grade different elevation. Um, if you still remember the current site, um, in the front yard, there are there's, there is about 30 inches of a retaining wall in the front. Um, so our effort is try to minimize uh, some of the block wall that might be in the front. Um, that was also part of the question from last meeting, how that section will look like, um, since that is part of the curb, ap uh, um, curb appearance that everybody can see from the street. So our main uh, strategy on that is to break the building into two parts. Hence, we have a different elevation between the garage and the house level. Um, and to answer one of the questions earlier, um, we will work on some of the details uh, during the working and drawings to make sure that the step down is code compliance. Uh, we have plenty of room around the staircase area that we can um, modify to make adjustment uh, to make the step down and to code compliance. Um, so uh, having the different elevation of about more than a foot, we are able to elevate the garage level a little bit higher. So the transition from the street to the garage level will be a lot more smoother um, so there won't be a steep difference of uh, great difference on the northwest corner. So we didn't need to have any retaining wall, especially in the front. Um, there will be a gradual slope, which we can uh, landscape it to make it look better. So that was one of the main concerns. So I'm, I'm available to try to answer any questions. Um, even on the civil, civil side, I'll try to answer any questions as, as best as possible. All right. Well, let me ask you one question. Then I'm a little, I'm a little unclear about your uh, about the side drawings. But at that northwest corner of the garage, um, it, it appears from the drawings that the slope up to the property line uh, starts right at the edge of the garage uh, of the driveway, rather. Um, if if you go to the retaining walls and and, and what. Um, uh, and the the level the the level earth uh, right adjacent to the building uh, as you are on the northwest side on the north side 
um, uh, it, it seems as it, it seems as though to meet that level passageway uh, south of the retaining wall that that you would need to uh, that you would need to have some uh, uh, some flat beyond the edge of the driveway that uh, that feeds into that. Uh, do I see that there? Let, let me try to let me see if I can if I can enlarge this on. I can't. Um, I'm just. Uh, I, I guess that you've relieved this a lot by 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 being able to uh, uh, to you raise the garage by a foot. You said yes, about a foot by twelve inches. Okay, I, and and so you, you see the dark line, which I presume is the edge of the driveway. Yes, correct. Okay, then where that last I can't read it. That last. Um, uh, that last uh, elevation uh, contour line, mm -hmm. which meets right at the corner of the the retaining wall there, that it, and then and heads down along the driveway. Um, that is all. That whole area in there is level with the with, with the driveway and also level with the passageway. Mm -hmm. Yes, um, so the contour lines, the bottom of the contour line is about uh, 118, and each line is about a foot. And okay. at, the end of the, at the end of the, um, on, the on the side of the, uh, the driveway and also the, the walkway, the walkway you're referring to is around the retaining wall section, am I correct? Uh, uh, yeah, going, going east-west yeah. along the, okay. the north so side if of the you, If you look at the the walkway level um, at the end of the walkway is about the finished surface is about one one six. Okay, so one, you're so yeah. you're actually taking that grade uh, from the neighbor's north property line uh, and in making it in making it a lot steeper going down to your driveway than where it is right now. Is that correct? Um. Yes. Yes. A little bit, <laughs> and a little, a, a, quite a, a quite a, a a bit. So I'm just now, you know, this. I, I I don't know if this should really, John. You'll have to help me with this, or Alex. But I don't know if this should you should um, uh, technically fit into our findings, or whether it should be left for the um, uh, the civil in, the uh, public works civil engineering review here. But I'm just wondering how, since they've taken this. Um, uh, uh, this grade from right at the uh, the neighbor's property line and, and suddenly really chopped way into it to make it a lot steeper, uh, uh, whether we should be addressing that or we should just ignore it and, 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 and let uh, the civil engineer deal with it later on. Uh, because well, I, I think the, I think I don't the see issue anything we have out in terms of a remediation for that. Right. I, um, you know, obviously there are ways that uh, the building code and whatnot can address that. The issue that we, for, from our perspective, is whether um, a retaining wall, if that would be required, or any other kind of remediation would compromise the design such that we couldn't make the findings. I think that's, that's really the question for us. Um, whether there's a retaining wall or the slope can work without one or whatnot, I'm sure the uh, you know the the city engineers and whatnot can iron that out. Um, so that's that's really the question. If if you feel like if there were a small retaining wall that that was required there, would that compromise the design such that we couldn't make the findings? I, I think I, I think that the answer to that, the, uh, my answer to that, John, would be that we're okay then because uh, if a if a, a retaining wall of of some sort were required at the property line uh, uh, most of it would be earthwork that was actually uh, 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 down out of sight and uh, and then going deep and it would be more it would be more costly but it, it certainly could be executed without any kind of a significant impact on what we're looking at here today <coughs> So in other right. words, we should just let that go, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, okay. I don't think there's an issue there because 
unless those right where where his new retaining wall is at the north west corner of the garage um it looks like it's benched two to one so uh, unless those contours are only a foot apart um they're only rising a foot and you can bench two to one all day long without a retaining wall i mean so you, there shouldn't be an issue there yeah okay I, I, you know i'm glad that i'm glad that the applicant stepped up to the stepped up to the plate about that because that was something that was a, a major question the last time around here. So if, if you guys are all satisfied, I am. Okay, do we have any other questions of the applicant? Okay, great. Let's uh, see, do we have any, um, any audience members or anybody calling in who would like to comment on this project? Actually, public comment is received by email, and we do not receive any email comments from the public. Uh, okay. And um, yeah, I know we did on the next one, but none on this one then. No. Okay. John, I got one comment. Yeah. John, I, I got I, I got one comment from the neighbor behind, who was uh, uh, complaining to me that. Um, uh, uh, there's a uh, there's a dog uh, there's an opening in the in the present fence. I'm sure that this will all be fixed in the uh, by the time the new construction is done. But there apparently is a, a gap uh, in the uh, uh, in the fence at the back of this property right now uh, with a, a fairly wild dog that has uh, scared the uh, out of the, uh, uh, the the occupant of that that back house. <laughs> she said, "Can you please ask?" Can you please ask the owners to do something about the hole in the fence right now? She's out of town at the moment, we'll, but, but we'll be returning soon. Okay, I, I think the uh, applicant's representative has heard that, and uh, I trust that the repairs to the fence can be done without uh, compromising the design. No, so absolutely will not affect the record here. Let's uh, close the public hearing and bring this back to the commission for discussion. Joe, do you want to lead us off? I'm I'm fine right now. Okay. I, I you know I, I think that the the, the issue I, I I'd like to hear what the other commissioners have to say about the uh, uh, the type of stone facade that was being proposed. You know, and they uh, uh, in in the past we have uh, we've had some discussion about what's really an appropriate kind of stone uh, uh, for us around around here in Sierra Madre, as, as opposed to just what's commercially available. And uh, so does anybody else have any strong feeling about, uh, about the stonework that's being proposed here? No. No. No, I, I'm okay. I All think right. the, uh, the proposed stone is a step up from the prior. On I'm still not a big fan, and I'd rather not have it at all. But I, I, I think it uh, it does blend better than the the prior stone, and it, it wouldn't get in the way of me making the finding. Okay. Um, I guess I can go next. Uh, I don't have. I think it's perfectly fine. I, I mean, I I don't think we were had any major issues the first round. It was more clarification on the grades and where the retaining walls were at the PL relative to how it stepped into the site. So I'm glad um, that was looked at a little more closely. And, and what you found is that the garage indeed needed to come up to sort of mitigate the grade at the north um, stepping down. So I, I think overall is fine. I, I saw that the color, I mean, I think this is a, a step better. Um, it's not right I think it's an off-white now um, so I don't have any issues with that I think the the little arbor thing over the garage is is a nice addition I think it will definitely soften that um, sort of element um, the stone I hope, is, I I hope it's going to be automatically irrigated though yeah <laughs> um, yeah I think I think it's going to be a silk wisteria vine so um, uh, but I think right, the stone is uh, a step up. I like that the fact that it, 
it's a little bigger gauged, so the pieces are bigger. I think that's better um, than the sort of fine stacked veneer. Um, so overall, I, I can support, I can make the findings. I think um, the applicant listened to all of our comments and concerns and addressed them to the best of uh, his ability. And so I think, um, I think it's good. I think it's better. Let's let it go. Yeah. Any other comments? My original objection was the size and presentation of the large door and uh, the garage door. And I believe the applicant has addressed that issue. And the grading and elevation has also been addressed. And I think that the, the project as they've done the second pass now is, is an improvement. And I can make the findings for this application. Okay, I, I concur. I think that, um, you know, at the last meeting, we talked about the basic design was good. Uh, I commend the applicant for addressing our concerns. And I also appreciate the design study on the setback, even though it, you decided not to change the setback. I appreciate that you went to the effort to, to look at that and, and figured out that that didn't work out for the project. I, and I think this version is better than the last, so I certainly can support it and make all the findings. With that, I will entertain a motion. So moved. I'll second. You're so moved to what? To, to, uh, uh, to approve as submitted? Approve as submitted. Um, I don't have, let me go back. 1906. Yep. 1906. I move that we approve as designed. Okay. Second that. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Hearing no opposition, um, motion carries unanimously. We'll move on to our third public hearing, which is design review permit 1905 at 686 Mariposa Avenue. Uh, do we have a staff report? We have a PowerPoint presentation staff report for you this evening. Joshua Wolf, he's the assistant planner, will be making that presentation and he's going to get that PowerPoint for us in a moment. Good evening, commissioners. Tonight we will be reviewing design review permit 1905 at 686 Mariposa Avenue. Uh, the applicant's request is to propose a infill construction located between the primary house and the rear garage with a second story for a total of 930 square feet, which encroaches beyond the angle plane. There is also a proposed remodel of approximately 70 square feet for the front porch, and finally construction of a detached second dwelling unit. A design review permit is required for a proposed second story and an encroachment beyond the angle plane of more than 10 linear feet. The project is located at 686 Mariposa Avenue, which is the south side of the street on the western portion of the city and south of Sierra Madre Boulevard. Uh, so photos of the house beginning from the left on the slide is the front of the house facing the street, a portion of which will be remodeled to enhance the visual appearance of the facade. To the right on the slide are the rear portions of the house where exists an open deck and detached two car garage. Uh, and the neighborhood analysis provided shows that the proposed residence at 2,465 square feet uh, which does not include the garage and second unit is below the average of the top one third of residents within a 300 foot radius of the property. The, the floor area represents uh, the floor areas obtained from the Los Angeles County Assessor and does not include habitable, non-habitable floor areas such as garages. Um, and commissioners will also note that the information presented here is updated from the contents of the staff report as a result of the changes and revisions in floor area of the proposed project. Can I ask a question quickly? Go on, ahead. That, on the previous slide, it says the lot size is 13,000 square feet. Uh, this is a different address. Ah, okay. 
That's a mean. Sorry. Uh, so to summarize, uh, the proposed project will have the following effects on the property an increase of the lot coverage from 19.7 to 26.9%, um, which is within the required 40% of the lot coverage allowed. Uh, there's an increase in the gross floor area from 1,935 square feet to 2,865 plus the 300 square foot second unit within the required 3,203 square feet allowed. There's no change to the front yard setback. Um, the cumulative side yard setbacks of 22 feet, uh, five on the smallest side and 17 on the other side, meaning the required cumulative side yard setback required of 15 feet and eight inches with the smallest side required at five feet. The rear yard setback will not change for the primary residence, uh, but the second unit will meet the requirements of a primary structure of 15 feet from the rear property line. Uh, and there will be no change in parking since the primary residence is proposing a maximum of four bedrooms and on-site parking will be provided for the second unit. The site plan shows the main siting and location of the proposed addition. The plan is rotated so that the front of the property is on the right side of this slide. Uh, the plan has been superposed on a satellite image to show context for nearby structures with a five foot setback uh, from the property line on the western portion. The addition is located in an area where the adjacent property uh, to the west on the top side of the slide has a driveway of approximately 10 feet, providing for a distance of at least 15 feet between the structure. Um, the roof addition is proposed as a hipped roof in order to maintain a low profile and to be consistent with the existing house. A demolition plan here shows areas to be removed, which include the roof of the garage and the existing rear yard deck. So the addition is sited on the lot such that the main residence will adjoin to the garage, creating a split level design uh, because the decline on the slope moving towards the back of the property. The lowest level where the garage is shows a floor plan, which uh, has access into a new storage room shown here and access into the main residence at the first floor um, via switchback staircase through this door right here. From the garage into the main residence is the family room with a powder room access and access into the existing residence, outdoor access, and access to the proposed second level. Uh, shown for reference on the first floor plan is the storage space access from the garage, which is partially underneath the staircase, as shown here. The second level has access via switchback staircase from the proposed family room at the first floor, uh, first lands onto an open to below hallway, allowing access into the separate into two separate bedrooms and one full bathroom. For reference, uh, the powder room is on the first floor is shown giving clarification that uh, no spaces are overlapping at the split level intersection. Uh, side elevations of the addition uh, with the east on top and the west below. The east elevation shows the outdoor access into the addition leading up from the set of stairs with a landing. The west elevation shows the side, which is five feet from the property line. From the left, two windows are placed where the powder room and bathroom are located. And one window is placed on this side for the bedroom. Uh, the north and south elevations showing the front street uh, side elevations uh, street side elevations on top and the rear elevation below. The front elevation shows the front porch remodel featuring an open gable end with exposed kingpin roof truss supported by single posts. Uh, also shown on the front elevation is the second story massing as it is visible from the public street, uh, which approximately measures 17 feet as measured from the ground at the street to the ridge of the roof. The south elevation shows the full massing of the second story addition as placed above the existing garage and adjoining interface with the existing house. 
The family room portion of the addition features a large window looking out towards the backyard with the garage visible. Windows in the garage and two bedrooms above are present and give views looking out towards the backyard. The massing of the second story addition encroaches beyond the angle plane measuring at 10 feet above and then 45 degrees in from the side property line as demonstrated here. Uh, so here's a demonstration of how the addition encroaches beyond the angle plane as measured from a point where the structure meets the grade to the top plate of the wall at any point where the height is measured greater than 15 feet from grade would exceed this angle plane. Uh, the graphic demonstrates the area of the wall measuring approximately 35 linear feet distance where the, uh, where the area highlighted in red encroaches into that angle plane. In this area, there are two windows, one into the main uh, second level bathroom and one into the bedroom. And then three dimensional models were provided to give clarification and visualization of the interface of the addition where the garage and the existing houses. Also represented on the 3D models are the colors and materials proposed, which will be shown in more detail in the following slide. <clears throat> Commissioners will note that a guardrail has been provided for the stairs at the rear entrance as an update to the plans originally provided. Also to note is the second unit represented in the model um, is proposed to match the materials of the primary residence. Um, and then three dimensional renderings of the front demonstrate the remodel of the front porch such that it uses quality materials to improve the facade yeah. from how it currently exists. An open-ended gable roof with exposed kingpin roof truss provides shading at the front door and bay window. Um, and here is just a colored rendering representing proposed colors and materials of the addition and, uh, and the porch remodel. And here are the proposed remodel, uh, in part, sorry, proposed materials for the remodel. Um, the gray asphalt shingles are proposed on the roof of the addition and additional parts of the roof uh, of the existing house where it adjoins on the second story addition. The same materials will be used on the roof of the second unit and these materials match what is currently existing on the house. Uh, gray aluminum roofing will be used on the front porch to match the color of the existing roof and there's a differentiation in material to provide a subtle focus towards the front porch. Uh, white stucco is used to match the existing building and is proposed throughout. Uh, cedar wood is proposed for the front porch, uh, wood materials, uh, roof truss and posts. Uh, dark colored black beauty paint is proposed for the window and door trim. And then windows and doors are proposed with divided light and vinyl material. Uh, for design review permit findings, uh, we'll have to meet the following findings, uh, that the project uh, property will continue to be used as a single family residence and is consistent with the low density general plan designation and zoning code. Uh, the proposed addition complies with development standards and will not unreasonably interfere with the use, possession, and enjoyment of surrounding adjacent properties since it will remain as a single family use. The proposed addition is compatible with a bulk mass scale and siting with the existing neighborhood and landforms by siting the two-story mass at the lower grade of the property and by mimicking the massing of nearby homes. The proposed second story addition reflects the scale of the neighborhood, is designed to fit into the neighborhood, both in its proportions and architecture. The addition does not unreasonably interfere with the public views or the views and privacy of the neighbors, nor does the addition cause material adverse impact. Uh, the proposed addition will match the colors and materials of the existing house and the front porch remodel will use high quality materials to improve the aesthetic quality. Wow. Um, the addition is not seeking relief from development standards uh, for an increase in height for an identifiable architectural style. And finally, um, the addition does not require a discretionary review for exceeding size threshold because where the gross floor area is uh, 3165 square feet, the primary residence is only 2865. Uh, and the second unit of 300 square feet would trigger the requirement for this finding in a discretionary review. So tonight the Planning Commission can either approve the request for design review permit 1905, approve with modifications to the request for design review permit, deny the request citing reasons for the findings of denial, or continue the project to provide staff with uh, staff and the applicant with a direction. 
Uh, tonight, the staff recommends approval of design review permit 1905 pursuant to the resolution 2004 with attached conditions of approval. And before I conclude tonight's presentation, I would like to bring to the attention of the commission a public comment received via email by staff from a resident south of the property uh, fronting Ramona Avenue uh, with concerns about cross lot drainage, view obstructions and impacts of the proposed second unit. Thank you. Okay, do we have questions of staff? Yeah, is there a, a survey conducted for the site with to topos? Uh, no, there's no topographic survey done. What is the um, approximate increase in um, lot coverage for hardscape? Um, that's gonna. I couldn't really tell from the from the drawings, but do you have an idea of how many more square feet, as far as drainage and those kind of issues? In terms of lot coverage, the increase is still under the required forty percent. Um, but in total square footage, it would trigger the requirement for low impact development, which is uh, 500 square feet or more. But it's only 300 square feet that's net new hardscape, which is the back house. Only the back house is going to be new coverage. Uh, so there's the back house at 300 and then there's this infill portion, which together add more than 500 square feet. But the infill portion today is already concrete. No, um, it's, a porch. it's an open porch. With concrete on the ground, I thought. No, it's actually raised. It's a raised porch. Uh, uh, it's it's a, a w raised wooden deck. So presumably we are adding that space. I didn't look to About. see if there was any concrete sidewalk or paving underneath it at all. How about how about additional for the parking for the uh, the ADU? For the ADU, it's not required to provide a uh, parking a parking pad. It's just a space on the lot. So they're just going to park out. in the existing driveway. They're going to park right? on the grass. They're going to park on the grass. That's where it's shown. So they're not extending the the concrete, the asphalt, any of that driveway back to that ADU. No. No. Right between the. It just says parking and then, and I don't know what's there. It's just a natural. I see a tree, so I assume that's all grass. I'm trying uh, If it gets paved it. afterwards, we have nothing to say about it because, it, you know, he didn't commit to saying he's going to park on the grass. Should at least do that. Well, I'm just trying to address the, the one neighbor who was thinking with all this lot coverage stuff that there's going to be more water running back at his property right i mean we could consider a condition of permeable paving on that if to the extent that the the parking area for the second unit is paved okay it's not currently proposed to be paved right right um joshua what's okay, the so rear fence right now is it chain link on that south prop property line i'm sorry did you say what the were you asking yeah, about the what, fences what is that there's no there's no wall there right i do not know um in the pictures it looked like it was you could see through i think there's a fence that a hedge has grown against i went back and walked against it i couldn't see through the bottom but at the top i could see through the hedge so there's no block wall it's just like a chain link or something chain link or wood as i re as yeah. i would think yeah. I do have the applicant and the designer, the project designer here tonight to answer questions if need be. Okay, before we get to that, I, I have another question of staff. It, I, I noticed that the director had made an interpretation um, that the square footage of the second unit wouldn't be counted on whether we trigger finding eight, given uh, the state law with regard to the uh, secondary units. And I think that's that makes tons of sense, and I, I concur. I but I I question what ability we have to ensure that that back uh, building is used as a second unit, as opposed to just you know a playroom or something. Because 
if they just said we're doing a pool house here, then we would uh, apply finding eight. Um, and, and so I guess a question to staff is, you know, what what do we have that we can condition to, to ensure that that's used as a second unit? For this project, a deed restriction will be filed with the property um, to maintain use and uh, design as a second unit. Okay. I noticed I, that they were putting in kitchen facilities, so that's good. When I was there today, the applicant told me that she wanted to use that as a workroom for her an office. Well, there you go. You just shot herself in the foot, didn't she, about the ADU by saying that? Well, I guess one of the questions is, is the purpose of state law to provide additional housing or to provide a building that could be additional housing? Because if it's permitted as an ADU and they can rent it out, that doesn't mean they necessarily have to, right? Can we um, hear from the city attorney on that? Yeah, yeah that, that's correct. It, the purpose is to, to increase the supply of housing. Whether the owner chooses to rent that out for housing or not is, is a decision for the owner. Um, there's nothing in the ADU law or the JADU law that requires the owner to, to either live in that ADU rent it, or rent it out, unfortunately. So we can't go back in a year and say, hey, give us the records that you've rented it out. They can just use it as a clubhouse or an art studio or, or an office. Well, there, there are things that we, I'm sure we can't, we can allow them or we can prohibit them uh, from using that space for, but we can't require them to use it for or require them to rent it out. But if, if we're putting a deed restriction on it, that it be used for housing, right? Then they can use it for housing. And if there's any evidence that they're not using it for housing, uh, we can, I assume the remedy for that would be um, specific performance, it'd be an injunction uh, because you can't get damages out of that and they've already probably built it so that they have the permit. Um, but but our, our remedy here, or the, the safeguard here is filing that deed restriction. And for purposes of, of our, our compliance with state law and um, RENA numbers, it would, if it's permitted as a second unit, it counts towards our numbers, right? That's correct. Okay. That's correct. Okay. Any other questions of staff before we uh, uh, get a presentation from the applicant? Okay. Hearing none, let's move on to the applicant. If the applicant would like to address the commission, um, please go ahead. Hi, this is Henry. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Uh, do you guys have any questions for me? I'm the designer. Yes, I do. Okay. Uh, I, Henry, I can't see your face. Are you? Something are, is wrong with my, um, sorry. With my okay. Um, why did the, you now I understand that everything is aligning on the, the, the west property side at the five foot setback. Uh, why did you make the um, uh, all of the new work fit the uh, the footprint of the existing garage, thereby forcing the there, thereby forcing the uh, the encroachment uh, into the uh, uh, the the plane of the second floor. Okay. Uh could you repeat the question, please? Why did Why did you have to make the the walls of the new building uh, of where the garage is right now uh, be at, at exactly the same place as where the one story garage is at the moment? Well, because we didn't want to move those walls to maintain everything in line with the existing, unless we had to, because the encroachment. If you look at the front uh, elevation 
with, with the encroachment from the front. It's only a few inches up on top. Do you know that the do you know that the footings on the existing garage will actually carry two stories under the uh, current building code? No, no, I don't. But we will make them carry them. No, no, you won't. Okay, because it will only be a haunch on that uh, on that garage. There's no way that you can make them anything. Um, what, what I'm getting at here, Henry, is, is that I think that you that the fact that you wanted to reuse the walls and the footing on the existing garage uh you're going to get you're going to get blown away at plan check by that anyway there's there's a rule so what i'm saying is what i'm saying is that it, it wasn't fait accompli that you had to push that wall out there and make two stories and say you had no choice but to but to have it encroach okay and i think that that encroachment is terrible yeah the 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 rule of listen the rule of thumb here that the rule with with every building code is that you're allowed to maintain an existing condition such as the wall and the footing for that garage except if you want to add load to it that that existing condition has to be able to comply under present building code and garages are built with a with just a haunch slab. Okay, I I, I can I I will bet you anything that that isn't gonna that, that existing garage is not going to carry two stories under the uh, under the present building code. So you have room, you you have room there to move that garage to the east so that your your second story is within the plane okay okay you you have a, a back out a, a, for regular vehicles a back out space is about 25 feet okay now you've got you got a 53 foot wide lot so you take 25 feet off of uh, of that you have 28 feet left 20 feet for the garage it means that you could come in without compromising your back out space you could you could have an eight foot setback in there okay. now an eight, foot, an eight foot setback let's let's have a look and see if that three feet will will solve the the encroachment into the plane all right no don't, don't joe don't solve this for him huh yeah don't, no don't, don't solve don't, it don't solve this for him <laughs> No, I, what I'm saying is, I, yeah, there there are a couple of different ways to do it. All right, I'm just yeah, and that I'm, and to, that I'm just trying. Excuse me. All I'm trying to do is point out that it wasn't fait accompli that that had to be there that way. That's all. Now there are other ways he can solve it. Okay, and I'll agree with you at that point. But I just want to make the point that it's not a fait accompli that we that, that we have to have the encroachment because that's not true. Well, I'll tack on a question onto yours. Why why do you have to encroach? Well, we don't have to, have to encroach the angle plane. We, we we don't we don't have to. But you're asking for that. Well, uh, this was our first presentation and I wanted to know if it was okay to encroach because like I said, it's only a few inches up on top. But if it's if we need to move it, we'll move it. It's not a few inches, it's like a foot and a half over the whole distance on the west. It's like a terrible looking blank wall to begin with, so why do, why do we want to allow it to be bigger than it has to be? Well, we'll move it. Okay. Uh, can I say a few things here? There are lots of ways to solve this. You can move the wall in from the, the, the garage wall. Uh, the garage wall can stay where it is, the second floor can move in, or the plate line can drop. And regarding um, the new footings for the second floor, they can be outside the garage and span across the top. You don't necessarily have to move the existing garage. There's lots of options here. You could put dormers in if you lower the plates. And so. We'll correct it. Good. Dormers, I have a might, dormers might be very interesting because 
uh, they they would break up the the big flat wall there, wouldn't they? Yes, the, that entire length of the existing plus the addition is relentless. And it, for that reason, it might be nice to bring in the second floor uh, wall just a few feet from the existing uh, east sided wall of the garage. And so. Um, I'm going to remind commissioners that we're in the questioning phase now and not the deliberative phase. I know it's not it's the pre to, to, to get going yeah. on this, but okay. let, let's let's just ask any questions we have for right now and then we can deliberate when we're done. I have one more question. Is there a reason the family room has to be a two story volume? Sarah, are you on, on online? Okay, I was on mute earlier. Can you guys hear me? Yes. Yes, we can okay. hear you now. Um, are you referring to the the covered space where the old deck used to be? Yes. Um, well, right now that that area, um, the only reason it's open in such a large volume is because of the connection between the second story and the existing first floor. Um, I like the idea of the whole open feel. Um, and it isn't a really huge portion of it if you actually step out on the deck. Yes, but it's it's a small room with an extremely high ceiling. Um, and it's it goes to one of the neighbor's concerns from the property behind you of blocking his view of the mountains. So since it's not really going to be doing a lot of space for you, good for you there in that room, you could drop that ceiling and and not have the high roof in that one little L section. Okay, um, I think the only reason why it's that high also is to the staircase going up into that second story. Actually, that is not where the staircase is, so. Okay. Okay, any other questions? Right. Um, so for public comment, we, we do have one uh, letter that we received via email. I think all the commissioners have had a chance to read that. Um, so we can't have any other? Is that the way it works, Vincent? Yes, that's I, I, I see in a, a chat indication at the bottom of my screen from a, a Christian Delgado. <laughs> Is that the person? Well, he he's, on a, he's on the IT staff, Joe. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. All right. Okay. That's a technical comment about uh, we need to mute when we're not talking so we don't get background noise. So that, that's very helpful, but not germane to, to this uh, application. So in any event, we will close the public hearing and bring it back uh, to deliberation. Who would like to start us off? I'll start. Thank you. Um, This will be the second project tonight that has been the product of a designer as opposed to an architect. And for the second time tonight, we are looking at problems that should have been addressed by engineering and engineering consultants and a little more technology. And, um, you know, in the past, I've tried to promote the idea that we, we look at work that is done by an architect because they bring in, they have more to bring to the table. And uh, I agree that the, I was puzzled that, that, the, that the garage could handle a second story. Um, I, didn't see, I didn't see a reason why the, the, the project had to get into the angle plane. Um, I, I think some, some of the things that, I've, the, 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 that the neighbor to the rear uh, brought up, I don't know about the, the sight lines because there's two giant trees in the middle of this property um, I'm, that I think are going to, that I think are larger than the project itself. I think there's some things that, that the, the, the designer has used to his advantage in, in that, that the lot slopes so much that the addition on the back is not going to have to go to maximum heights in order to blend in because there's a three foot drop between the the front porch and the and the back of that garage, and they've taken advantage of that. Um, but I don't think this is fully baked. I, I there's that that giant wall. 
there's the whether you can put a second floor on that on that garage even that even though the second floor i believe they held the plate height at seven six i it 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 didn't look fully fully thought out so um i'd i'd like to have the have the applicant return with with first of all some more engineering on whether that whether this project can actually be executed the way they think it can or whether it's going to need additional engineering to be successful and um you know i i'm not sure this is i'm not sure we're looking at something that that's done yet um i guess i can go next um i wholeheartedly agree with bob on every every point there i mean i i had trouble just reading the drawings um you know and i do this for a living so uh, I, I, the sheets didn't even have numbers on them so i didn't know what sheet i was looking at um you know when it came to just the garage there wasn't a, there wasn't any footings there it was drawn as just a four inch bar and then you had a building sitting on it um you know the fact that there's no survey on a on a site where we're dealing with grades and it's sloping away from the street and then you have a letter regarding the southern neighbor having potential issues with runoff onto their site like we need a survey and we need the spot elevations and we need to see the grades um you know i'm not going to take the, the the site plan as gospel on on what's happening there because drawings I, I couldn't I couldn't understand them to begin with and I think actually it's not a failure of of sort of trying to work with the garage as much as it is a layout issue like that was the easiest to go from A to B is the way it's laid out put two bedrooms on top of the garage figure out a stair in in that interstitial space to connect it I mean, if you look at the floor plan, there's the powder room that's on off the family room, and then there's a there's an entire space above it that's just like a block that's covered up. It's just blank space. Like it it it, it makes no sense. Like one thing they could have done, you know, was they've got like a four foot crawl space or three and a half feet or whatever it is to to level out with the house that where the deck was. They could have dropped the family room down a foot and 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 conversely dropped the entire building down and got out of the encroachment you know there's there are a lot of things that could have happened here if it was studied properly instead of saying you know this is a first pass and we want your feedback well yeah i mean that's fine but like there's no need for for that to encroach and and, and i think it's a layout issue is where it where it's at like it's not properly laid out and and you would have avoided all of those pitfalls had you studied it a little bit better and looked at how these pieces work together and how to connect them and 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 your levels like you could have had a foot step down into the family room from the dining and then gone up from there you know and and sort of been out of that plane and i think you know that side of the house the west side is five feet from setback from the PL, and it's looming over the western neighbor, looking right into their backyard. And so, to say that you can make the finding about the enjoyment and pleasure of my property when you've got this stucco box looking over you, um, I, I just think, I mean, I can go on and on. Um, and Joe, it's got your favorite roof color too. So yeah, thanks for pointing that out. <laughs> well, I have another. Um, but anyway, I, I I think to go to something Bob says every time is I don't think this is ready for prime time. I, I mean, there's a lot of information that's missing, and I, I just you know I think it needs a lot more clarity, you know. So okay, I'll go next. I agree with Bob and Manish both, but what I'd like to see is uh, maybe a longitudinal drawing 
with the east and west neighbors like we had on that previous uh, project this evening that shows the relationship of the proposed, the existing house and proposed addition to the existing neighbors. That would be really useful. And, you know, even to the north and south to address the neighbors' view concerns that's south of them. I think that would clarify that there's really not much issue there. I still don't think you need the high mass over the family room, though. It seems gratuitous and looms over the front of the house. Okay, but, uh, you know, so yeah, I think a, a lot needs to be done, including the survey. That's it. All right, uh, I'll just add a couple of things, and, and that is uh, Peggy, Bob, Manish, uh, I, I totally concur with everything that you just you, you just said, and, and, and Manish, I, I think if we put together uh, all of the all of the issues, in, including really having uh, uh, spot elevations in there, uh, evaluating evaluating what the elevations in that in the north south section look like. Uh, in, in addition to the questions I raised about the uh, the uh, whether the, the garage footings were going to you know whether the garage is going to get torn out entirely down to earth and they'll start over there anyway they should just make that assumption right now uh, I'm really in concurrence with everything that everybody else is saying I only want to say one other thing here uh, to the to the applicant and that is that when you ask for something which is a very a variance like a, um, uh, a you know, uh, uh, encroaching on a, uh, a required uh, required plane like that, that it isn't a matter of just, uh, uh, you know, uh, putting, a, uh, putting something in, out there and, and seeing if the commissioners will like it or not. There, there are specific reasons and specific findings for approving such a thing. And, and uh, you know, and I wish that staff would just advise applicants on the fact that, you know, it isn't a matter of, well, I'd like to do this, or let's see what the commissioners think. Okay, that is, that those are not findings, and we really can't act on that basis. So anyway, I, I guess we're all in concurrence right, right now so far. Uh, uh, send it back to the drawing board. Send him back to the drawing board. And, and you know, to add to that, Joe, like, I look reading, combing through the drawings, it made some, you know, these are building code requirements, but there were stuff on the drawings on the first sheet. I don't know what sheet number because there weren't any, but basically <laughs> saying what the minimum soil capacity were and, and those were dead wrong. Like, so that gets me thinking like you, you should have a soils report because if you're going to use, if you're going to use those gar garage footings, if there is any, um because there weren't any drawn in if there were and you're going to say that that's the minimum bearing capacity no that's not right like you don't know that how, how can you know that that's like the assumption would be even more you'd have to assume a higher psi on that soil if you don't have a soils report like so you know there, there's a lot of things like that technically that if it was me, I would advise my client, you're getting a survey and you're getting a sales report if we're going to use this existing building to build on top of. Like, it's just, that's like square one. So well, you know, there's a serious, there's a very serious likelihood here, and you know this, that, that a, a one-story garage like that would have been built with just a haunch slab and, and no footings to begin with. So... It, it wouldn't even come close to, uh, not even conceptually, to being able to um, uh, comply with uh, the uh, 2020 code requirements for two-story residential construction. And um, uh, if you thought you were, if you thought you were going to try to prove to the contrary, you would have to do some exploration, you know, a foot-wide trench down around and underneath, and see what the exact profile really was. So you know. I was really wondered how the how the bathroom in that back ADU is going to work because it's a long, long way uphill to the sewer line. And I didn't see anything on it that says, you know, how's that going to work? So and I believe the line goes underneath the existing the, on, on the paper, it goes underneath the existing garage. And I was kind of wondered how that was going to work, too. So 
just a lot of things that did, you know didn't didn't click yeah they, they may be signed up for an ejector pump there you know uh, yeah. whatever but it wasn't on the drawings yeah um uh, bill are, are you still with us do you have any comments yeah um i mean it's no, no sense beating a dead horse um if this was 1972, I totally understand what they're trying to do, but un unfortunately, I also helped somebody rebuild a garage on their own house. And uh, Joe's right, and everybody's right. The footings are probably as massive for the frigging garage these days as it is for the house itself, and rebar and all kinds of stuff. So, you know, I feel bad. I understand they're trying to use the existing design, but I think they just need to tear the whole thing, the garage out, and start with a, a you know. A, from square one and they'll get what they can like they said after that the the you know the uh, options are unlimited they can do whatever they want they don't have to encroach into the into the uh, um into the angle plane at all so they can take all those things out of there and maybe they'll get a better design out of it in the first place which is um you know what everybody else has been talking about um yeah i, I concur um I, I concur with everything that the other commissioners have said. I think we, we need a little bit more work on this. I, I do think, though, we, we perhaps might have glossed over some of the benefits of this design. Um, you do have a, a change in slope that the applicant has taken advantage of to minimize the, the appearance of bulk and massing. Um, the addition is in the rear instead of the front. There is a second unit, although I think we need to have more uh, faith that that's going to be used as a second unit, especially and not parking on lawn. Um, and and I, I think that you've got a house, um, you're, you're preserving existing housing stock and improving. So I think that's good. I, I, I think that, um, you know, that there are some issues we can we can work on. Uh, and I, I would hope the applicant could take a look at those and, and find some constructive uh, notes from what the commissioners have said tonight to, to improve this project. Um, so that's, I think, where we're at. With, for the applicant, I guess you, you've got um, sort of two options now. We can continue this project and you can revise and bring it back. Or or if you really want, you can have us vote on it now. I think you can guess where the vote will probably come out, but that, that is your right if you desire. So let us know how you'd like to move forward. Did Denison fall off the... Uh... No, I... I <laughs> oh. Where's Dennis? I, I, actually, I actually wanted to echo a lot of John's there he comments. Is. Oh. There um, I thought that the, uh, the the design trying to leverage the existing footprint, add more covered space on the lot to the concerns of the uh, neighbor to the south. Um, we always sit up on the dais and talk about how we want to keep things exactly on the footprint that they're on and try not to expand. And I think that they really took a lot of that to heart in this initial pass. Um, Absolutely went into the angle plane. If you take a good look at the houses on either side, the house that we're worried about is probably extending into the angle plane themselves, if you take a good look at it. And the house on the east is built right up on top of it with the same view that, that the other house would have. So I was as heartbroken about those because they were exactly fitting with the neighborhood in that space. Um, they built it to the back, which is one of our big pet peeves when people build it to the front, um, try to minimize that bulk and massing. So I agree with a lot of the stuff that John said. I think um, they've gotten a fair amount of feedback on ways that they can improve the design the next time we see it. So, yeah, You know, you never know. You never know uh, just by looking at what's around in the neighborhood, what was built under previous codes uh, or, or what the reasons were. Um, uh, you, you know, I, I'm, I'm going to agree with you entirely that the basic configuration of, of, of for this neighborhood of, of, of going down the, the west property line, extending out, extending out that way, uh, leaving the bigger open space in the back is something that is repeated along there. And I, and I think it's something that makes an awful lot of, of basic sense for uh, for those size houses on those size properties, or those width properties anyway. So, uh, you know, I, I think that the base, I, I will agree with you for everything negative that we've had to say about this, uh, I'll support the idea that the basic configuration here is a, 
uh, is a good one. It's kind of a tried and true good one. It just it just needs a, a, a you know an awful lot of an, an awful lot of further uh, re refinement. You know, I'd like to make the case that the present design seems to be tied to that garage and they want to use that garage and if you took that off the table and said i'm going to give you whatever you want up until the end of that garage line and you can rearrange it anywhere you want they might get a better result with a little more room and not have all these goofy you know upstairs downstairs things going on i mean because you could still push that house out back and have plenty of room if you decide that you're not going to have to deal you're going to you're not going to make that garage the linchpin for the whole design one other thing that i wanted to point out um i went to the back fence because i i had read the email from the resident back there about their view being blocked and i stood up on a foot and a half two foot tall stump and could not see over the hedge below the roof so I think that uh, to the point that somebody made about uh, drawing a longitudinal um, design there, it would be a great way to rule that out as a concern of the commission. Because I don't, uh, to Bob's point, I think that with the existing trees that I didn't see were going to get removed, I don't understand this table as a concern. Got a little glitchy there. I think perhaps nope. we lost Tom. Um, exactly. No, nope. stay glitchy. Sorry about that. Welcome to the internet in Sierra Madre. <laughs> yep. Okay, I think we've uh, we, we've given a, quite a thorough examination of this now and, and it's it's time for the applicant to um, give us some thought on how they'd like to proceed. Um, I, first off, I, I really appreciate all the feedback that you are all providing me, especially with the engineering and the spot elevation and the surveys. Um, that's something that I really do need, need to take into consideration. Um, what I'd like to do is really go back to the design process um, and the reason for, you know, I understand what you're saying about the whole garage and staying with the existing footprint is, you know, the reason for this is working with the existing footprint is I didn't want to add too much to this remodel, really. Um, and so I have no knowledge on how, you know, building a second story is on top of a, a garage. So I thought utilizing that garage space and kind of working with that layout would have provided, I guess, more of an ease as far as construction costs, but didn't realize I would have to end up turning, <laughs> breaking down that garage anyway. So yeah. what I'd like to do is end up kind of taking it back, really taking it back and really, you know, taking all your points into consideration um, and redesign this correctly. Um, and to the point I didn't realize um, that it was, sort of a block view um, since it was in the back uh, for my neighbor. Um, but I think that's where I want to go forward with this. Okay, that, that sounds good. I um, Would you like us to continue it to a date certain? Um, if we do that, you won't have to re-notice, but um, we'd have to figure out what that date is now, or we could just continue it to a date uncertain, but then you'd have to notice it over again. Um, we can do an, a date uncertain. Okay. Um, okay, that sounds good. Um, with that, we will uh, entertain a motion uh, to continue to a date uncertain. Also moved. Okay, second. we have a motion and a second now. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, that motion carries unanimously. Thank you. Next, we will move on to um, Planning Commission reports. Does anyone have a report to make? Nope. Uh, I'd just like to make a, uh, 
a shout out compliment for Danny Osti, who's done so much for the city um, during these times of, uh, you know, of, of us all being uh, cooped up. Um, he has cer certainly lended out a hand of friendship to almost uh, everybody I know. And um, so anybody that needs a uh, few service and things for their, for their house, he's, he's been more than gracious and also giving out free firewood, I must mention. So he's been a really good guy. And uh, I just wanted to uh, say something about it because it's come up lately and we're all under a lot of stress and I think people like that that have been citizens, you know, that have helped out the city for so long in other, other ways. I'm sure the city's gotten a few trees trimmed <laughs> just uh, uh, by the good, good, good of his graces and um, should know about it. And, um, just uh, put that in the public record. Okay, that's, that's great. Anybody else? Yeah, I had, I had uh, shot a uh, an email to to Vincent, uh, and I'd like to I'd like to um, to get a brief report. I, I I'm curious about what the uh, what the bottom line is with what's going on with the monastery, right? right now and and how we've you know it, it, there's a lot of people that are saying to or a number of people saying to me that oh it's just it's completely fait accompli we're going to have nothing to do with this uh it, it's just, I, i'm curious about how it has gone to that and in without any idea whether it's going to come to the planning commission in some form or not can you can you overview what what's going on there for us the project will go before the planning commission and also the city council. So that this will continue to go forward. Right now, the applicant and the city are still under negotiation. So we don't have anything uh, formalized as of yet and nothing's been formalized by city council. If I, if I could add something, not, nothing is very complete until CEQA is done. CEQA is going to determine what is what can and cannot be built. So to the extent someone is saying that, it, it's worth noting to them that uh, CEQA will happen and everyone will have an opportunity to comment on that CEQA document, the, e the environmental impact report. And, and just so everyone understands, that's a long process. That's not a quick or fast thing. So there will be plenty of opportunity for people to comment. That's correct. Okay, good. Thank you. I'm glad to hear that. I'm sure a lot of people are glad to hear that. Okay, let's um, move on and, and have reports from staff. So currently on the April 16th planning commission, we don't have any items scheduled on that date. Uh, we could cancel that meeting. And uh, at this point, with the order, Safer at Home order, and changes that were al allocated for the Brown Act, meetings were to be canceled if, unless they had discretionary items. I know we have a number of items under discussion, but uh, I would. Uh, also defer to our assistant city attorney to confirm that. I, I believe uh, that was the city manager's order. Am I, am I correct in, in believing that? In terms of uh, only having discretionary action for the planning commission. Right, right. I don't think the city council reached that conclusion, but I, I believe uh, because we are in and because an emergency has been declared, the city manager is the acting uh, director of emergency services and can make those determinations for city facilities and city services. So the city manager, I believe, has determined uh, or has has ordered that all uh, meetings that don't have discretionary items be canceled. So for the time being, I think we should cancel. So it looks like we're going to be canceling the May 16th meeting. April. April. I'm sorry, I wasn't totally clear on uh, 
what happened with the zoning that was sent up or was going to be reviewed by city council? Are you referred to the the commercial code? The commercial code that was agendized and then unagendized. But that's the, the council pulled that and it's going to send it back to the subcommittee and then back down to the planning commission so that we can make revisions based on subcommittee report and to uh, stitch it together with the um, parking code, which we're working on. Which, by the way, the subcommittee has, the planning commission subcommittee on parking has uh, a revision, which we can look at next time we can have a hearing to discuss that. When will the subcommittee with the city council be meeting? That date still has not yet been determined. But I assume we might have a delay because of COVID. And the other alternative to keep moving forward would be to host a Zoom meeting as we're doing now. But that concludes my updates or comments. Okay. Vincent, do we have something for May though that's on the agenda? Well, May 7th. Um, we have an item for May 7th. That's the um, nine to annual terrace that we just continued to that date this uh, evening. The first okay. So we can then um, adjourn this meeting to May 7th and um, we can find out, um, and Vincent, you can find out if we this, the City Council Planning Commission subcommittee can meet remotely or, or how we're gonna deal with that in yeah. the interim. Yes. Okay, sounds good. Anything else before we adjourn? No, I think the uh, Zoom meetings worked very well here tonight, don't you? I, yes, I was just gonna I say- I am sort of surprised how well it worked. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a, a lot more technical glitches. So um, that, that's good to see. I'm using Zoom okay. to teach a hundred students out at Cal Poly right now on, uh, online. It's, uh, uh, it's, it's, it's pretty good. Yeah. Okay. Okay, with that, I will adjourn the meeting until May 7th. Okay.